Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Who is this person, C.J. Worldman? Is he a a Muslim sympathizer, an Islamic sympathizer, or is he something more than that? He seems to have amazing amount of uh, knowledge about Islam, and uh, though his name sounds Jewish, there are questions about what exactly does he stand for, where is he from, where does he live. Who does he work for and how come uh, you know he puts out some extreme views uh, of tweets and we're going to share some of those with you so to talk about all this let's welcome Utsav Chakrabarti. Utsav Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskar Sri and uh, thanks for inviting me back it's as always it's a pleasure talking to you. So Utsav CJ Worldman this person, I've been following him a little bit, but I think Hindu Pact has done a fair amount of research. And whenever you are ready, let me know and I'll put up this light show and we can talk through that and take it away, my friend. Thank you, Sri. So we have been looking at CJ Verleman for the last couple of years, primarily because, you know, he's one more of those uh, quote unquote Western uh, journalist slash activist slash expert that seems to be uh, suddenly appearing out of nowhere in 2015, 2016 time and targeting uh, India as a country and Hindus around the world in general. And uh, so, you know, we started looking at some of the stuff that, that was coming out from him and tried to connect some of the dots in terms of his associations and his organizations prior to his focus on India. And uh, it's been a very fascinating uh, set of informations that we have gathered. Now, uh, we just, in the Hindu Pact Twitter account, uh, just started a series of tweets recently because of what uh, CJ Verlemen did just in the past one week. What he did was there was a very unfortunate uh, uh, murder attack, murders in uh, New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico, where four um, Muslims from the Pakistani, Afghan, slash Afghan communities were killed, murdered. And before there could be any uh, real investigation, uh, I mean, obviously, because four people died and because uh, they belong to a certain community, it became mainstream headline news. And CJ Verleman immediately jumped into the, the conversation. And as you can see on the screen there, he tweeted that the perpetrator is most likely a white supremacist but could not be, I would not be surprised if we learn he or she is a Hindu nationalist. So out of nowhere, in the middle of New Mexico, uh, supposedly the death of four Muslims could be the work of you know, men or women from the Hindu community. So this was a tweet that uh, gained a lot of attention. A lot of people immediately reacted to it. And you know, that's when we also came up with a response after one day when it was clear that the, the murders were an uh, intra-Muslim uh, community fight. Uh, the murderer of these four people was an Afghan Muslim. So we really uh, kind of, you know, made a, made a graphics, uh, infographics showing how C.J. Verleman is an active propagandist. Not the first time, but this, was, this event was a trigger for Hindu Pact to respond. And uh, so, you know, once we made that tweet uh, showing how he was unnecessarily and with a lot of malintent trying to bring in Hindu community into this murder, we felt that this was going to be a, a longer set of tweets because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm sorry, I, I have a kid uh, crying behind me. But at the end of the day, we realized that we needed to tell the audience uh, what it is that they need to know about CJ Verleman because this has been going on for too long. And that's the reason why we made a series of tweets exposing some of his previous activities. So, yeah, and so in, in this, this uh, slide, you see that, uh, uh, you know, we basically are talking about how CJ Verleman used the murder of uh, Muslims by Muslims as a tool to to target the Hindu community, and uh, uh, that was the reason why why we made that uh, series of tweets exposing him. Uh, now, <clears throat> if you go to the next tweet, you will see that this guy is actually 
not just one somebody who has done this new in the past he has been doing this because of his association with radical islamist group so in the past he has been a uh, 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 apologist for the isis the isis uh, uh, in syria especially because you know isis came up in both syria and iraq and we, in the west especially america was very eager to get rid of uh, isis in iraq because you know it it was a strategic strategically easier task to do but in syria because of the way the civil war in syria was uh, growing up there was a lot of hesitation to go after isis and al qaeda in syria and that is one of the reasons why it stayed long for so long and cj wardleman during the height of the isis uh, you know control over eastern syria and north, some parts of northern syria he was actually trying to be an apologist in support of isis and you can see here uh, you know he also supported british islamists who went and fought in in this tweet you will see uh, the name of taqir who went and fought for the hts hts is a group called hayat tehrir al sham which is the syrian wing of al qaeda so burleman was so embedded with these these groups uh, that he would communicate with them regularly he would uh, bring out their propaganda regularly and this is something he did between 20 uh, for 2016 2015 and 2017 so those are some of the details uh, we shared additionally uh, you know he actually wrote articles uh, verleman actually wrote wrote articles saying why isis is not really a, a bad organization so you can see that you know he's justifying an organization like isis and he even goes on to say that isis is not really islamic i mean they don't really they don't really do things that are islamic it's more like a video game uh, call of duty uh, kind of people who are who are part of this organization so he made every effort to play apologist for isis during his time as a journalist in the middle east can i ask you a quick question uh, sir yes this whole thing about the creation of isis how much of that has to do with jerry paul bremer dismantling the entire iraqi army and then we suddenly find out that many of them have crossed over and started this isis under dr baghdadi um you know is this something like you know shooting yourself in the foot could the americans have not just found the bad apples and just gone after them created a nuremberg style of court and tried all the generals for their atrocities but left the army as is and let the new government handle them what did they why did they not do that so that's a very very good question you asked shri and, uh, and you know this is something that we all need to understand our audience needs to understand that when america went into iraq uh, the dynamics in iraq was that it was a uh, sunni and shia country with very powerful power structure that both these uh, sects controlled and what america did initially was to use the shias to subdue the sunnis especially the sunnis who were from the region of tikrit where al uh, saddam hussein comes from and in doing so they made enemies out of the sunnis and initially there was al qaeda in iraq uh, that that came up and then you know we went after al qaeda in iraq and shut it down and then you know the the isis the roots of isis came into being and the roots was basically from all the disgruntled sunnis who were in control of that country for a long time under saddam hussein even though the, he was himself quite a bit secularist uh, uh, for a long period of time and then under the new power structure they were being subjugated by the newly empowered shias who, who america supported uh, in in the beginning now as america's uh, stay in iraq progressed from 2002 onwards up to the you know late 2007 2008 what we started seeing is that the power dynamic shifted back again so the shias got too powerful and and under the shia leader muqtada al sadr i yes. i don't know if you remember the name i remember they, that yeah they started uh, started hitting america because at the end of the day shias do have relationship with iran and they iran would flex their muscles wherever she has become powerful so muqtada al sadr and the shia started hitting america and then america went back to the sunnis who they had spent four years 
you know, really putting down using the Shias after the, in the new Iraqi regime came in. So this whole power dynamics led to the rise of this radical Sunni group, which was ISIS. And, you know, it took very little time. And this is the thing that most people who are geopolitical strategists don't pay attention to. They pay too much focus on intranational and international relationships, and they forget the roles that strong ideologies play. And this is an example of how people can fail when they don't understand the ideology behind geopolitical games. ISIS was essentially a Sunni uprising in Iraq that became a global Islamist movement because of the powers that be supporting them from behind, including major oil shakes from the Middle East. Only to see that more large portions of you know vacuum power power vacuums in Syria and Iraq fall into their hands and then become uh, literally a genocide field for every other minority community, including the Yazidis and the Syrians and and some Kurds and you know so on. Very unfortunate. Let's go back to our presentation. I'm, I apologize for asking, but I felt that you know people need to understand what really went wrong. I mean, U.S. created this this monster and. Uh, that is true. I mean, if, if even though we may not admit uh, the follies that we made in, in helping the rise of ISIS, but certainly once ISIS and Al-Qaeda in that region became powerful, you know, it is people like CJ Verleman who became very much embedded with them. And we let that happen for a long time because I believe that, you know, it was like the enemy of the enemy is is a friend kind of approach where we were thinking that the ISIS is taking on the Shia Islamists uh, from, supported by Iran and the Hezbollah. Uh, therefore, you know, we should be okay or at least okay on, you know, wink, wink kind of uh, position. And that led to, to people like CJ Verleman gaining so much authority and access to media in America. I mean, CJ Verleman became so much of a voice because, you know, what he would do is he would write and, and talk about, you know, ab about the good things that Al-Qaeda and ISIS are doing, almost whitewashing their, their role, and just make a little bit of comment here against Assad. And the Western media would be like, okay, fine, as long as you say one bad thing against Assad, we are okay with it. Just go ahead and say, promote an, uh, ISIS and uh, Al-Qaeda. And that's that's the genesis of uh, you know people like CJ Verleman. And once this whole uh, Iraq and Syria conflict started dying down, and there was a, a light at the end of the tunnel, as I would want to put it. ISIS started losing territory. Uh, the Syrian uh, HTS, Hayat Tehrir al-Sham, which is the Syrian Al-Qaeda, started losing territory. Then suddenly, all these people, CJ Verleman and all, became kind of quasi-jobless because they had no role to play. The, that war was being lost. So then suddenly out of nowhere, in 2015, 2016, especially in 2016, you see this guy just jump onto India out of nowhere. Like, the guy probably never talked about India before in his entire life. Never probably only watched India and Australia cricket matches because he's an Australian. <laughs> but then suddenly he, this guy goes and starts talking about India. And that, I believe, is, uh, is, is a very uh, important uh, observation that we need to make. That, you know, who are the people who started targeting India around 2016? Uh, CJ Verleman, you know, one important, Audrey Trashke, uh, uh, Peter Frederick, you know, we, we discussed Peter Frederick in one of our previous threads. So this was part of a larger disinformation campaign that was being controlled and organized by a global network with obviously Pakistani pl plugging into it, uh, but certainly a very powerful Islamist network from at a global level. So you, you see that, you know, Verleman con continues to do this promotion of Al-Qaeda and ISIS and, and, and keeps promoting their their contacts uh, at the global level. But one more thing you will see if you, as you go forward is that once ISIS starts losing, he starts promoting a Ottoman, you know, he, he goes back to the more fundamental goal of the pan-Islamist narrative, which is the revival of the Ottoman empire, almost, you know, harking back to the early 1900s, you know, in the Khilafat movement and the Mopla uh, rebellion. He kind of picked up on that. And he started regurgitating that entire, you know, neo neo Turkish uh, Erdogan's uh, agenda, uh, and and under that narrative, he starts communicating and building relationships with Indian Muslims, 
because there is a big section of Indian and Pakistani Muslim community that believes in the neo neo Ottoman narrative, and that's you know obviously the first entry into India for any anti India activist or anti Hindu activist is Kashmir. You know that's the doorway to the <laughs> to, to <laughs> India hating. You know so. Yeah, here you see, you know, the Varleman jumps into Kashmir right away and starts talking about, you know, the usual tropes that, the, you know, there was no genocide of Kashmiri Hindus. You know, this was all uh, uh, Jagmohan real Indian government uh, propaganda and, uh, you know, they were all living ha happy, happily ever after. These guys must have gone into some sort of a deep funk when they saw the Article 370 got abrogated by a signature of a president. I mean, he said, oh my goodness, what am I going to wail and moan about tomorrow? Absolutely. So, you know, one, one thing that, that I noticed, uh, we all noticed during the removal of Article 370 is that for more than two, three decades, these people had been accustomed to a, to a meek and a very back foot oriented India. You know, we will defend let, let them come to us and we will defend at the right time kind of approach that India always had for decades, in, including on the on disinformation in, and propaganda. The India would always be like, yeah, let, let them target us, let them attack us. When, when we need to talk, we will talk. That was the way India approached all these issues, including Jammu and Kashmir. So, you know, they were accustomed to that. They were doing propaganda based on that. Then suddenly out of nowhere, you know, in, in Narendra Modi's second term, right around that time, he starts, these people start seeing a different India. And that different India was a surprise to them. What it did was it brought in more resources for these people. Because suddenly these people were getting money from places they were not previously getting money from, including you know countries like Qatar and Turkey and, and, and the global Islamist network, the Muslim Brotherhood, the Jamaat Islami, they really put their act together to focus almost single-handedly on India. I mean, they, before they would focus on five other places. Uh, but at this point of time, beginning from the removal of Article 370, their focus has been primarily India. Next, please. So, yeah. So, so I just wanted to talk a little bit in this slide uh, that you see about what C.J. Verleman brings to the table that many of the other quote unquote, Western anti-Hindu, anti-India propagandists don't bring. So most of these Western anti-Hindu propagandists are, uh, are regurgitators. So they would either be in from the academia or they would be like public social activists slash, you know, uh, social justice warriors kind of people who would just regurgitate content against India or Hindus that has been already created. They would just put it in their own words and start regurgitating it. Uh, so that way, these people actually don't bring anything new, except a, a white face uh, who obviously, you know, given the social politics of the region, people love to see white faces, especially South Asian communities in America. But what CJ Verleman does is actually more than that. So we observe that CJ Verleman actually brings attention to India and Hindus from a set of Islamists who are active warriors, like physical warriors they're actually in combat and and that is a very dangerous thing because during the time this article 370 removal happened in kashmir we noticed that there was a lot of chatter on social media from places like idlib in northern syria which is the which is the area that is still controlled by hayat tehrir al sham or the al qaeda in syria and we, if you look a little bit into into that chatter you will see that these Al-Qaeda operatives are actually being encouraged and fed information by people like CJ Verleman and uh, his contacts within uh, Al-Qaeda. Like uh, I, 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 we mentioned this guy called Bilal uh, Abdul Karim. He's a he's an African-American convert to Islam from Baltimore in Maryland. And, uh, you know, America has disowned him, so he cannot come back to U.S. They have canceled his passport and... You know, he's, he's considered a terrorist by America. America even tried to do a drone attack on him once a couple of years ago. Uh, but Bilal Abdul Karim is actually uh, CJ Verleman's main contact within Al-Qaeda in Syria. And in multiple videos, at least two videos that I saw, Bilal Abdul Karim actually interviews CJ Verleman 
on on uh, India and Kashmir. So, so that is something that you know our audiences need to understand and see uh, in terms of you know what what Bilal Abdul Karim's role has. You want you want to take that call while I uh, make some announcements. All right, viewers, uh, I'd like you to share and forward and subscribe to our channel. This is my usual pitch. Uh, Utsav has a call that's uh, you know not going away, so he's going to quickly take care of that call and come back. And we have a few more slides to go in as part of this conversation. But I think it's a good time for us to understand that one of the ways you can also help in addition to subscription and clicking on the bell notification is to put comments. More the comments on a video, the more the engagement of the video the next time around when we talk about it. So help us out by also putting in comments and you are a very intellectual audience. You guys put very good comments. So please help us out here. Thank you. Uh, he's back. So take it away, sir. Thank you. My apologies to the viewers. Uh, I'm visiting my in-laws in Miami and uh, uh, I, they have a physical phone line which rings. Uh, I, I could. <laughs> so, you know, I, I switched my phone off, but that rang up. So my apologies to the audience. So coming okay. back to uh, yeah. yeah, coming back to uh, Bilal Abdul Karim and CJ Verlimen. So what I'm trying to highlight here is the fact that uh, CJ Verlimen actually has been involved in recruiting and diverting attention from other global issues that ISIS and Al Qaeda has towards India. So he he is actually a direct conduit in terms of the intellectual uh, narrative that many of these grassroots jihadis get through people like Bilal Abdul Karim. And uh, uh, if you if you go to the next slide, I believe you will see that uh, this guy, uh, even there was an Indian origin Muslim recruit in Al-Qaeda who was who was later on arrested by, by HTS, whose release also these guys were trying to get. Both Bilal and and uh, and and, and CJ Verleman. So you can see, like, they are fully on the ground, hands on, with these jihadi groups. And I won't be surprised. You know, we uh, I am only able to study information that is out there in the open source uh, sphere in social media. But I won't be surprised if, if Indians and government of India actually has more information about how CJ Verleman has been directly involved in 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 jihadi with jihadis in Kashmir Valley as well as in Pakistan. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Utsav. And viewers, one of the things that you can do is uh, pick up on some of these uh, videos. And whenever you follow, let's say you're following Whirlman and you see some, you know, outlandish observations, you can give a link to this video and say that, you know, you've been, you know, uh, shown to be what you are. You are a paid prostitute, whatever you call them, prostitute. You are a paid prostitute. You are a prostitute. And uh, see what he says, because one way to shut these people up, they think that because nobody is challenging them, they'll keep on piling these lies, lies after lies. They say that we have got your entire history here. And, one and, more thing uh, I wanted to add, Sri, I just want to ahead. add one more thing, is that in 2021, CJ Verleman actually started a campaign and led a campaign against Indian companies. So, you know, he, he called it the same Muslims in India and Kashmir campaign, boycott Indian products. So because he's so well networked in the Middle East, he, he stayed some time there and he knows a lot of Islamists there, including rich uh, Arab sheikhs in Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE and Qatar, even though the governments in these countries don't have direct connection to him. He actually ra ran a very popular campaign and you, you can see on social media, he had more than 3,000, 4,000 retweets where he made a list of Indian companies uh, and uh, including companies like Tata and Godrej and, you know, there were about 40, 50 companies he did. And we, we actually tweeted about it as well. Uh, he requested, this was right when COVID was ending. So he made the, the downturn in the Indian economy during COVID time as a launching point to target Indian companies that sell products in the Middle East and the West. Uh, and, and it was very popular campaign. It did affect some of our companies. So, you know, I, for those who are watching this and, and listening, 
this is not just a fight between security forces or the government or the Hindutva forces against Islamists. It's a fight that is going to affect the grassroots of India. I mean, the companies who got targeted employ millions of people. They feed families. So, you know, it is it, it goes down to that level. So CJ Burleman is a very dangerous actor in that way. All right. And I think we have all the, our slides uh, covered now. Um, Utsav, I have one question for you. Yes. Uh, this is something that a viewer also is asking. Why doesn't he, uh, uh, any government designate him as a terrorist? Let's take a look at it. He lives in L.A., right, to the best of our knowledge. We don't know his nationality. He was born Australian. We don't know if he's now taken up U.S. citizenship or not, or U.K., who knows? So... Okay. When, when some country, let's say not a country of which he's a citizen, declares him a terrorist, the jurisdiction is very limited, isn't it? Absolutely. And uh, I don't know the reason why, but he seems to be traveling pretty frequently and pretty openly between uh, the entire Western world, uh, as far as I can see. And he, he's based out of LA. He seems to travel to the Middle East. He travels to, uh, he's, he's of Australian origin. So there must be a, a, I have a feeling that there is something that, that, you know, many of these people benefit from that lets them uh, operate, allow him to operate the way he operates. And I think that's the gray area that we all have to figure out and understand. I mean, you know, many of us know about WikiLeaks documents and how Al-Qaeda in Syria operated. And some of them even had patronage from, from individuals and organizations in the West. So that's something we, we all need to look into. But, you know, India is obviously, Indians and Hindus are the roadkill, if if I can put it as sadly as that, in, in many <laughs> of the situations, you know, we, we become the roadkill in this. Well, I think we have been far too uh, docile and, you know, we tend to ignore these things saying that this is a Pagal Janado. And I think now it's not, it's no longer acceptable. And I think this is also a shout out to many of the Indian companies. Uh, Utsav, you'll be amazed. You know, they, are, they have money set up, uh, set aside for corporate social responsibility. And, and I used to write a lot of investigative pieces where I said, see, this I'm trying to fix the system so it will work for you. But you know what they used to say? Sir, we know what you're doing is good. We will support you from behind. The moment NSC, this is just an example I'm taking, National Stock Exchange comes to know our name that we are helping you, they are very vindictive. I mean, these are rascals who are running NSC at that point of time. I'm not sure if things have changed much now. So yes. I, the, the, this is, you know, I used to be like, you know, so so you want me to go out, stick my neck out in the front, but you, you don't want to help our cause. I can do a better job of researching if I have more resources. I mean, I put my mouth where my money is and, and I would expect some to do it. Now, see, this is the thing, you know, you keep quiet for too long. Now you're also going to become uh, affected by this. Take a look at what's happening with the high tech companies in the Bay Area. Some idiot called, I don't know, anyway, uh, some, again, Equality Labs, we have what? We have white, we have shown them, we have exposed them to, you know, every piece of, you know, clothing has been removed. They are completely now, uh, you know, exposed and they still keep on writing nonsense. Well, the, so so the, my that is the point we have to understand, and our our corporate sector has to understand in India. Uh, I was looking at the list of companies. There were more than fifty companies that uh, that C J Verlimen targeted for boycott India campaign, and uh, in those companies, I have seen people. I mean, many of these companies actually donating to people like you know uh, C J Verlimen who are in India. I'm not saying they donated to him, but. There are supporters of CJ Verlemen who are in India. There, there are media outlets in India that portray and repeat the same narrative that CJ Verlemen uh, presents. And these companies have donated to them. And, uh, you know, that that is the... I, I have a feeling that many of these companies feel that just by giving a few thousand dollars to these quote-unquote annoying people, they will buy their safety. It, it, is, it is a very, very dangerous, uh, uh, you know, trend. These people have to understand. I think Israeli companies have understood that and, and they act accordingly. These companies, Indian companies have to understand. The more you try to pacify and buy peace with the Islamists, the more they will come after you. That, that is the nature of the beast and they have to deal with it eventually. And I think this is the time for now, right now, for 
almost any, every entity of any value to expose people like C.J. Verlaman. And, and I think in America also, we need to educate our lawmakers here, our uh, 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 State Department folks here, that why are you letting people like C.J. Just because he's not targeting America right now doesn't mean that he's a, you know, He's not going to do it in the future. Right now, he's, he has India in the in the crosshairs. But tomorrow, he might be having America too. Let's hope that the United States Department of State doesn't say he might be a bastard, but he's our... <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that that could be a very, a very uh, pertinent <laughs> point. And they might say that, actually. <laughs> they have done that in the past. And, and I think let's take some questions. There are a few questions for you, sir. Let's start with, uh, uh, there are some of you who are very, very smart. You have the hashtag ask Utsav. So it helps us to, you know, dump the whole text into a file and then start searching. But uh, we are going to do our best to catch the other questions also. Here's one from Good Vibes. Whose mouthpiece is this CJ Worldman? Hey, you're listening to the whole Ramayana and you're asking the we are also trying to answer this question. <laughs> so I, I will try to put it in a simply a simpler, uh, uh, just name two or three entities. My my personal analysis and belief based on that analysis is that CJ Verneman is an Islamist who is in the in the camp of Muslim Brotherhood and gets significant input and resources from Qatar and Pakistan. So that's as simply as I can put it. Thank you so much. I think uh, all the usual suspects are there, <laughs> right in the front. <laughs> Jen Kashyap wants to know, Worldman is likely funded from Middle East and has an agenda like taking down Indian firms. Where is the money coming from exactly? Jen, he just answered your question. I, I believe it's, it's from Qatar, Qatar uh, and, uh, and Pakistan. Uh, how much of the money and the information and the agenda depends, uh, you know, I, I don't have access to the financial information. So, Utsa, why doesn't India allow Qatar to in, uh, invest $200 billion in India? That way, they'll say, you know, oh my goodness, our money is at stake now. Let's not do any mischief in this country. You know, there was a time when Indian thought leadership actually believed that they could let the Pakistani army invest in India. And that way, mm. they will not target and bomb those places. Uh, mm. <laughs> there was a thought thought process, in, at least in, in some parts of the Indian uh, administrative and, and defense security network that believe that. Uh, I don't think it works that way. I, I, I genuinely believe that uh, these people are here to, they're here to play a civilizational fight. And uh, I think money won't buy it for us. General Bajwa, uh, this is from Lalit Jain. General Bajwa is visiting us to negotiate with IMF or take the bounty from US of facilitating killing of Al-Qaeda leader. What are your thoughts? I believe the Pakistanis sold out uh, Ayman al-Zawahiri. Uh, yes, yes. Ayman al-Zawahiri ha had outlived his uh, charisma Usefulness. and influence yeah. yeah, within the Islamist, military Islamist movement. And uh, he was a retired uh, hero, uh, as, as the Islamist would say. And uh, that's why they took him out. Uh, his, his, uh, his situation, if you if you think th think like it, put the Islamist hat on and think, his situation will be like Khalid ibn Walid. You know, Khalid ibn Walid was a general of Prophet Muhammad, a brilliant master strategist, who was the guy who during the initial stages of Islam, like during Prophet Muhammad's time of Islam, uh, played a key role in expanding Islam into the Byzantine Empire, in the Battle of Yarmouk being the most famous of them, which is in Syria. So when Khalid ibn Walid, you know, he won battles after battles for Muhammad and was a charismatic, this great charismatic new Muslim. And when he, you know, won those battles and there was no more battles to fight in the Byzantine region, you know what these guys did? They told him to retire and then poisoned him. <laughs> so so the, there, is a, there is a tradition of that in, in, uh, in the historical uh, historiography of <laughs> of this community, Islamist community. And next question, I guess we are all, uh, done with our questions. Thank you very much, Utsav. And uh, it was wonderful. A lot of new information came out. There are going to be many such people, at least for the viewers. When you come across some outlandish statements from people like this, feel free to challenge them. Say, what about 
you know, Hindu Pact's findings. What about this video? And 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 that way you are armed to come back. I mean, once we start dishing it out to them, they're going to find it much, much harder to come out. Because every time they'll put out a tweet, then they'll be looking over their shoulder. How many people are going to rebut us with all these things? So that's how you, you know, shut these people up. And and CJ Varlaman is somebody who should be very isolated and 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 rebutted all the time. Because as as we are doing right now, Hindu Pact has done this uh, and will continue to do this. We will bring out content that will help them, uh, help us connect them to groups like Al Qaeda and ISIS, and and that actually is even in in a Western liberal uh, setup is not acceptable. I mean, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that's that's something that we have to continuously do and expose these people. Thank you very much, Utsav. It was wonderful listening to you and viewers. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. The needle has moved a little bit. Now two thirds of the viewers are subscribers, but there's a big amount of ground to cover. One third of you still are not subscribers. Do feel uh, free to subscribe to us. That way, you know you don't have to come seeking our videos. Our videos will come seek you to tell you that there is something new. We know. You know that we don't waste your time. We're almost always on point and bring a new perspective. Thank you very much, Utsav. Namaskar. Namaskar.